I just finished public school, I'll tell you why it's great Waking up at 6 a.m. to pledge allegiance to the state Yeah, it's true I got my public school blues Well, we're going to take a call, 8-something-something, something. you are on School Sucks Live Who's this? Hey, it's me, right? This is you, yeah All right, this is me <laughs> My name is Bill Hey, uh, Bill From Jersey Hey, Jersey represent I love Jersey, uh -huh. I'm from there Oh, yeah? Did I read somewhere that one of you guys, uh, this is my first time hearing the, the, the uh, show. Okay. And it's my first time calling in, so I'm not entirely sure about what's going on, but... Uh, How did you I hear about the show? Huh? How did you hear about the show, Bill? Uh, I think I just came across it on somebody's uh, Facebook thing. I just saw... Yeah, I oh. just saw some just says School Sucks Fly. So cool. Like, hey, hey, you so must have good friends. friends. All right, well, yeah. you just made me keep my Facebook account for another day. I was going to cancel it tomorrow. I was like, I've had yeah. it with this thing, but if you if we just if it just led to a discovery, I'll, I'll try it for another week. Um, you would have been back. <laughs> that's what they say. Oh, man. That's just when say. I think I'm out. Don't let's kid ourselves. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you, um, um, I read that one of you guys was a teacher. I was a teacher in private school, and since about 2006, I've worked on, I guess what I would say, the periphery of the system, doing a lot of, like, academic and college counseling and SAT tutoring. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, um, what was the worst part of your job? Uh, which job? Because the, they all had bad parts. The <laughs> job in the teaching. Uh, the, being a teacher. Well, in retrospect, I mean, at the time, uh, you know... Honestly, I hate to even admit this based on what I know now, but I used to get really frustrated with, like, why won't these kids listen to me? Why won't these kids be interested in history? Why, why does this one kid fall asleep in my class? I found it um, actually kind of uh, insulting. Yeah. Uh, what, in retrospect, the worst part of the job was how much I thought I knew compared to how much I actually knew based on what, what I know now. Like, I kind okay. of feel like I owe all of those kids an apology for how liberal I was and how little I knew about almost anything Yeah, at the time. Okay. okay. Uh, how long were you teaching? Oh, and when I say liberal, I just, I just mean bias. I, I just mean that I was clearly expressing a bias, and I wasn't, um, you know, identifying it as a bias. I was identifying it as, you know, like college professors often do, as objective mm -hmm. reality, which was, um, you know, really irresponsible on my part. What kind of a bias, exactly? Well, like a very, like a left-wing bias. Like, I was very influenced by Howard Zinn and Noam Chomsky, and I still yeah. find a lot of the stuff that, those, I mean, even though I think very differently today, I still think that those are uh, credible guys in a lot of different subject areas. But uh, it really, you know, pulled me pretty hard to the left at the time. And whether it was a left-wing bias or a right-wing bias, is kind of immaterial. What what I'm saying is, is that I had a bias. I was teaching with a bias, and I wasn't teaching kids about a bias, which was, um, you know, I would say, in retrospect, really unfortunate. So. What did um, uh, oh, all right. Uh, what the? Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Take your time, man. Oh. We can edit. Don't worry. What What did you teach? History. And well, I I I went to the school. Uh, my, my teaching history was this. I was a teacher's aide, and I did, like, outdoor education, and then I was promoted to the lead teacher of a specialized program on a different campus of, a, like, a boarding school where I had to teach every subject. And then I went to this, day, this private day school where I taught history primarily, but I also taught high school math and middle school science. Oh, okay. What, um, what made you come around? come around to to uh the idea of uh of, liberty and education it was it was uh certainly a process i think it was sometime when i was i was in graduate school around the time that i had this first teaching job and somewhere just like researching some kind of project i came across john taylor gatto uh -huh. and um eventually uh the who was the other one more of a left wing uh, John Cazole, who wrote like Shame of the Nation and The Night Is Dark and I'm Far From Home, uh, and I kind of tabled that stuff initially, like didn't look into it probably as closely as I should have at the time, but it definitely planted seeds, uh, and I was pretty knowledgeable in about in history, so I had kind of a natural distrust for you know powerful 
Uh, I was uh-huh. targeting it more towards corporations at the time, but eventually I realized that you know corporations and government were more uh, allied than opponents, as like left wing uh-huh. history presents them to be. Like the government will save us from these terrible corporations. Uh, so I, I think I had a distrust for power, for tradition. Uh, I, I was very skeptical about many aspects of society and culture. And it was 2006. I, you know, probably looking for some like new 9 11 conspiracy podcast. I came across this show called Free Talk Live. Are you familiar with that? Uh, yeah, that I've heard of. Yeah. yeah so Free Talk Live okay. was, was very influ- influential for me because they did a show every day. The show was current, meaning that, you know, it wasn't like, let's explore this topic or let's do a series on um you know this idea in economics they were hitting the news of the Uh day each and every day and it was being you know put through uh they they were applying the ideas of uh, libertarianism or whatever you want to call it however you want to characterize that to all of these events so every every day i was getting my news uh, you know what was actually happening in the world and then understanding it better through their presentation and understanding how it applied to liberty or the opposite of liberty. And from there, I, you know, I started looking for more podcasts, uh, and I found uh, Complete Liberty by a guy named Wes Bertrand that was extremely mm-hmm. influential, and yeah. um, now is off and running. So, so I had this, uh, the way I usually describe it is I had a collage, right? Like I knew all these different things were wrong. I knew the education system was corrupt, and kids weren't really getting taught anything there. And I had these ideas about, you know, corporate power and the state, but it was, it was very much a collage. There was nothing um, coherent. There was nothing anchoring it in the center. And once I started to understand, like, property rights, self-ownership, the non-aggression principle, everything mm-hmm. organized into a kind of mind map where there was something very concrete at the center, and, th- and that really helped me. It's funny how that kind of stuff is never even suggested to you going all through a high school. No, like, uh, like things like property rights. It's like not even, a, it, I don't even think it's brought up. I don't think it's like, something it, most people think about, really. It, it, I mean, even even from like a history class or some kind of a civics class or something, because I'm a teacher and I, I'm, I'm just shocked at, at how little students know or care that, you know, rights are something that they have and, you know, w- w- why it's important and even uh, what the law is regarding your rights and what it should be and why. It's like they have absolutely no compass for that kind of stuff. It, it's just never even talked about. I, I actually think it's kind of creepy. Uh, yeah, almost like they're being schooled in how to be defenseless. I don't know. I don't see any deliberate m- m- malice in it i'm not quite sure of that i just think that it's i just think it's uh because it's like education seems to be this sort of a top-down thing where basically at the top there are people who just want to keep their jobs right and and so that's what's going to motivate them to uh to mold the curricula and things like that like i don't know it, it it just seems like when I bring these things up in class, I I feel like it's the only time that these kids are ever hearing anything like it. Like I I have uh, the Bill of Rights in my room, and it's like they've never even seen it before. We got seniors and juniors that it's weird. Well, there's uh, one thing that I hear, and this goes right to the political mainstream, is the idea that the rights that people have, or really the liberties that people have. I'm trying to get away from using the word rights were actually born out of that document, that the Founding Fathers were some kind of deities that bestowed those rights upon people, and that that is not just uh, a document that was intended, a very controversial document at the time that a lot of the guys who were signing their name to the Constitution didn't even want to include, because they thought it gave too much power to the people. Uh, that's not where people's rights come from, but I think what people are learning in these government schools is that their whatever privile- rights they have are actually privileges bestowed upon them by the state. So, do you teach in a public school? No, no, I teach in a private school. Have you ever been spoken to about some of the things you've said? Uh, 
What do you mean? By say, well, I, like maybe I'm projecting a little bit of my experience onto that. The people who ran the well, private cool, school right? that I worked at were very conservative. So they were mad when I would say that, uh, you know, the Spanish committed a genocide after Columbus came. Because he said they didn't know any better at the time. Mm -hmm. that, that was okay right. at the time. And I said, well, w w they were Christian, right? That wasn't a new thing. That was still the following of, mm. of Jesus, you know? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. always pretty much been the same for, you know, a couple thousand years, like, do unto others and all that good <laughs> stuff. So I think they knew better. So, like, because Columbus is some kind of American folk hero, um, we have to be apologetic for what, not what he did, but what happened as a result of the Spanish incursion here. And that's just kind of, you know, clinging on to tradition. So... Um, they, uh, you know, I, I felt like I was rocking a boat in, in, uh, rocking the boat in a way that made people uncomfortable. I don't know if you've ever had any experience like that. Well, I guess if you, I only teach math, so I don't, <laughs> okay. I'm not, I'm not like the primary source for that thing, but I think I am. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? I don't, I mean, I don't know. They know that I have like very, like, uh, I'm like a voluntarist, I think. Mm. Yeah. I post things around the, my classroom, like stories about SWAT teams, like breaking people's doors down and stuff, and all kinds of like you know hardcore like government things. But um, how do you think? I right, am I taking up like way too much time here? Or, this is or, better or, than whatever we were going to do. <laughs> so <laughs> keep going. All right. This is great. All right. All right. Uh, what do you think is the best way to let to um to get all? Uh, I guess. All alternative education out there. Like, I, I mean, obviously you have your show set up and anybody can tune in, but for people who are more like uh, mainstreamed, like, what do you think is the best way to, I mean, it, the, the the best way to like, you know, actually educate kids to make the, the changes that we want to see, to actually have a, a market in education. Like, what is the answer? Suppose that you wanted to uh, become a teacher again, yeah, and uh, all right, and, and you just you just want to teach. How would you go about doing it? Say that you were bit by the bug and you just wanted to be a teacher again, and you yeah, you wanted some kind of a classroom experience. What would you do? Would you like apply somewhere or try to do your own thing, or like to what extent? Like what's I'm not thinking, I don't know what kind of background checks are done, but I'm thinking I'm not going to pass one. <laughs> um, no. If it came to, if it okay. came down to working in a public school, um, I, right. I, I, would, I would really like to hope that they're Googling a person's whole name before they, <laughs> before they let them into a public school, and that's probably uh, yeah. going to <laughs> remove me from the employment sweepstakes in most states. <laughs> so, um, the... Uh, well, I, I can't. I'm, I can't really speak to the process, and it is something that I've spent a little bit of time thinking about lately. Because I, I would like, I do, I do like to be in front of a room uh, of people, and I do like to tell stories, and I do like people to listen to me, which kind of explains why I, you know, I have this podcast. But as far as actually communicating these ideas, there's, there's two things that I've learned from from my own experience uh, that I think are very helpful. I think what's most important, and I learned this the hard way from not doing this, is that. If you want to share ideas with people that are out of the mainstream and very confronting, you have to be able to make some kind of meaningful, personal connection with them uh, before you can do that. Because not only are you introducing something that's completely foreign and often diametrically opposed to what most people believe, you're also really... Uh, I don't want to... You, you are. You're, you're threatening them emotionally. Because think about what that means for their comfort level. Think about what that means for everything they've been told, how they've conducted their lives, to learn that so much of what they believed is complete and utter bullshit. Um, so that's not something that can be done in one conversation. And there is no way to shame somebody or embarrass somebody or zing somebody into agreeing with you. That is really only a good way to push people away. Um, my approach to sharing these ideas has also been, um, you know, George Carlin once said that at the point of laughter, that's the best place to insert a new idea. And I've said, you know, so many times this show is nothing. If it's not entertaining, if it doesn't make people laugh, uh, you know, even, I mean, if a show's an hour long and a person 
laughs twice, that's a funny Liberty podcast, I, I think, you know? <laughs> so, so as long as like there, people say, oh, I remember that, that was funny and it keeps them coming back. I mean, there's comedy podcasts that I listen to that I might laugh three times during an episode, but it's worth it for those three laughs. So I think it's very important to, to keep things light and to find, you know, entertaining and amusing, uh, like, you know, comical ways to tell stories about serious things and to not, uh, you know, Alex Jones people to death, to doom and yeah. gloom people to death. That's, that's, uh, I think that that kind of message is, is a thing that a lot of rational people who might be reachable would probably run away from because it's too over the top and it's too confronting and it's too negative or, you know, some combination of all of those things. I see. Is that helpful? Well, I know, <clears throat> really what I wanted to know was like, what, if you wanted, if you wanted to teach, how would you go about doing it? I think I do do it. I, I, so that's what I mean. Like, 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 like this is the show or are you an actual teacher now? Uh, well, both. I, I think I like to think that the show is educational, you know, sure. even, and it might be, uh, it might have a lot of fat on it, you know, as far as the content is concerned. Like if I only wanted to, to push like, purely educational content i could probably cut a lot of our shows down to 10 minutes but i don't think that's the only reason why people listen which goes back to what i said before i for several years was a vice president of a tutoring company that focused on sat tutoring which was a way to still teach to still have that you know that room full of people um out working outside of the system even though what i'm doing was certainly supportive of the existing system and I was benefiting from the existing mm -hmm. system because if kids were taught critical thinking and logical reasoning and uh, persuasive skills uh, and how to build their vocabulary from you know understanding Greek and Latin roots I would be useless in what I do because they would already have all those skills so I thought that the SAT was a, a fine opportunity even though it's not something that most kids look forward to to strengthen a lot of these skills that school leaves underdeveloped skills that allow them to not only communicate effectively but defend themselves intellectually so i've enjoyed doing the sat tutoring but i'm kind of burnt out on it because it really is just, just like the same thing over and over again and i really mm -hmm. don't do well with the same thing over and over again so right. that's how i'm doing it now the, the best i can okay fair enough i'll take it <laughs> any other questions right. you got one more question I got, I got. Oh man, I could, I could hit you guys all night. You guys were, uh, you were all uh, struggles before I called, actually. <laughs> well, well, we did have a topic. We, we were going to get into a topic, but I much, I much prefer. I was waiting for it, but it was, it was like, it was like not happening. I was just like, man, why, why am I watching <laughs> these three dudes sit around at a table? Well, that's what a lot of people, I think, are that. asking. I think that might be part of our problem. Reaching an audience on YouTube. Well, people turn on the videos and they say, "Why am I watching three dudes talk? I could go to any bar in this city and watch that." Well, that's why I said, like, fuck that, man. I'm hopping in there. Well, <laughs> there, there, there was, there's always a bit of pre-show before while we're still still <laughs> getting everything together. You called right as the show started, really. We had yeah, a little we... bit of a story from Osborne uh, okay. concerning uh, his so daughter. and then credit. All right, that's cool. I'm down. <laughs> so I don't know when you tuned in. I mean, you could have tuned in uh, when we were setting up equipment and listening to Michael Jackson, but nah, no, um, you, man. the first time, the, the, the first story we talked about was, um, you know, this look-say versus phonetics approach to teaching reading which uh, i caught that yeah yeah oh, that's a that's oh. a scary thing so um yeah go ahead if you can hit us with a couple more questions if you want all right so say that some woman called in to the show and and, and said to you you know i really like you i would like to find somebody who would be who would teach my son history like you would yeah what are my options what should i do what would you tell her? Okay, well, uh, ideally... Have him listen to the podcast. Yeah, I would say... <laughs> I would say. See, the, the good thing is that if someday the world becomes just a little bit more rational, I have pretty much a, a new type of resume that I could give to people where I could say, you know, if you're looking for somebody who could teach in this way, you know, from this point of view, on this historical subject, you know, here's 15 minutes, you can, you can listen to me talk about it here. So I would recommend doing that first, and obviously I would want to, if it was if it was practical, get hired by this person myself. But there's a lot of resources. Uh, next week I'm going to have a guy on named Tom Woods. Are you familiar with him? Yeah. Okay, so Tom Woods does Liberty Classroom, right? 
which is just like an online subscription program uh, where you can learn all these, uh, uh, you know, various economics topics and history topics. You have um, Mises. What else, Osborne? Wasn't there another one? Excuse me. Wasn't there another one? Those are the two I know of. Okay. Wasn't there like a freedom something, future of freedom? What was it called? Fee? Future what was Fee? Foundation. Oh, the, the Foundation for Economic Education. They're, yeah. they're doing oh, yeah. a lot more things geared towards students now. Right. Um, it, it was a little more mainstream, but they, they, have, um, they have seminars during the summer. What kind of resources part. are they? Like, like the kids would like log online and just watch videos or what kind of? No, because that's, you know, anybody who is just trying to get by on that is really, they would immediately lose to YouTube, which can offer pretty much the same thing for free. So yeah. I know that Tom Woods provides feedback. You're able to talk with the people who give the lectures. Um, fee was more classroom based, I think, where there would be Q and A. Uh, it was it was obviously a different model than traditional like high school or college, uh, but yeah, most of it was being done online. And most most large you know universities have followed suit. We have iTunes University where people are putting these Harvard classes up online. I I used to do that uh, years ago, where you could just download a whole course uh, and put it on your iPod. So there's there's lots of resources that are available for free or you know, for very low cost. Because that's what I was thinking about doing. I, I was kind of interested in writing a math textbook, but I don't want to write a textbook. I think I would. I think it would be cool to do something like that. But I wonder, like, like how would how would how would I make profit doing such an outfit? Like, or how would they? I, do you think that would be enough money, that, or it would generate enough interest from from uh, like people who homeschool and do want an alternative, do you think that there's a s sufficient market for stuff like that? I don't know. Look at look at uh, look at Khan Academy, right? They they do a lot of stuff like that. They have like math courses, and we yeah. did a didn't we do a show about them? But, but yeah. do they have do they have whole courses though? Yeah, or, or they just yeah. Here's how here's how Khan works. You create an account. So it, it seems like I mean Khan might have just started making YouTube videos, and I think that's what he did on his little um, you know. What's that thing called that he uses? Board? Tablet board? With yeah. His little writing drawing board? Uh, right. That he does. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he was making the videos and posting them to YouTube so he could help his cousins with math or something. But, you know, con, you go, you create an account, and it sets a curriculum for you. And you can pick the subjects that you want, and it, it understands your progress and gives you more difficult uh, assignments as you master something. And it, in most cases, I worked uh, with a homeschool girl last year using con for math and maybe an English course too. And they really, really want mastery. And they do a lot of like carrots and stick stuff that I don't totally agree with. Like you get a badge uh, if you master something. But, uh, you know, sometimes people like badges. It's kind of, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like has that video game appeal to it, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, it's certainly not used to control people in the same way that it is in school or in, you know, society. So, um, I'll, as far as my answer is concerned, I'll give you a silly answer, and then I'll give you a serious answer. And the serious All answer right. is based off the silly answer. Um, I thought about writing a book, uh, of like, a, like a very streamlined SAT book that was something like the two-hour SAT, the three-hour SAT, because you look at these SAT classes, some of them want $1,000 for 20 hours, uh, yeah. and that, had, that has a lot of fat in it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, the Most of the like the Kaplan book or the College Board book. They're these big, thick, phone book size books. And I really think that that's something that could be simplified and streamlined down to, I'm thinking like fifth, like a pamphlet. And yeah. <laughs> honestly, as I started, how, what would be an exciting new way to present this stuff that had never been thought of before and what's hot right now and what do people want? And... uh I came up with SAT porn, but nice. that's not practical, right? And not saleable to minors. And not saleable to minors, which is my target audience, so strike that, pretty much. <clears throat> that's a bummer. Yeah, but, I mean, what a great idea, because they do, like, SAT stories, like, where, where they, they have these, like, short novels for teens, and they put SAT vocabulary words into them, so it'd be, like, a way that you could learn vocabulary by reading some kind of cool story. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, with sex. Ooh. Okay. 
Oh, you know, if you had a basic literacy version of that, I bet it would be a big seller in the prison system. Now, wait a minute. Vampires I could have having sex yeah, doing the SAT. That's what I'm saying. Hey. I could market something to teenagers that has sex in it as long as the people having sex are vampires and werewolves. Right. No the problem. Or, or, or as long as they wait a long time to have sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the porn. They study. It's about celibacy, yeah. It's just a big cock tease for, uh... <laughs> what it is. They, study for half, they study for like an hour and a half, and the guy's trying to put the moves on her, and she's like, no, we have to study. And then at the end, they... You're gonna uh, get the problems right, and it unlocks things, right? There you go. <laughs> See that? That's well, perfect. these are terrible ideas, but <laughs> my serious answer, my serious answer to that would be, um, you know, t- try to approach it from some, uh, basically just what I said, just trying to approach it from some angle that hasn't been thought of before. And I, I think one thing that would sell is the streamlined approach. Like, what is the simplest way to explain this? I, books, ma- you know, textbooks are that size because they have to be bought by schools and they have to last a whole year. Yeah. But if you wanted books that weren't going to be used, that weren't going to be adopted by textbook adoption committees in various states, you know, maybe you could have something that's much more efficient. I mean, I worked um, a couple of years ago. I was tutoring this girl. She was a seventh grader. Her mom pulled her out of school just for math to shame her math teacher for how bad the math teacher was. And I think <laughs> in two months, we did the whole year working out of the book. Hmm. So... Um, mm-hmm. the streamlined approach I think would be very, especially for homeschoolers, you know, or unschoolers who have a desire to learn that material. I think that would be very saleable. Yeah. I want to do some kind of a live streaming thing. Actually, kind of like your show, only like you, you would tune in and learn like whatever it is that you feel like learning. Like I remember I, um, I had signed up for classes in Aikido. And the guy there was really cool. You paid like one, like it, like an upfront fee, a lifetime fee. It, 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 was, it was like a lifetime thing, sixty bucks. And then you paid like per class, and you just showed up and practiced at whatever level that you were, among other people who could practice at like higher and lower levels. And I was in there, and I, I just thought, like, wow, this is like a great way to learn. I can pace m- myself, and so can everybody else, and we're all kind of getting taught at once. I thought, wouldn't that be a neat way to learn other stuff? Absolutely. Wait, you mean you weren't only allowed to practice with other people who were exactly your same age? <laughs> it, it was amazing. It, yeah. it, it was r- really cool. I just, I, it just occurred to me, like, why doesn't this stuff happen? I don't know why this isn't a a thing yet was there a lot of peer interaction there like did you have like more advanced students helping the beginners out with with stuff uh no mainly we were all just we were it it was it was just the one guy and if there were six people in the the class we would all trade Mm. like partners for every uh every exercise but we all did the same exercises because there were like certain times that you could show up for like a a, a beginner level class and then an advanced class and, and oh, yeah. so but within those two like wide brackets people of different skills were actually pretty broad but it, it was i i really liked it and i want to find it i'm on like a mission to find the best way to teach kids math and i guess that's what led me here to your show because uh i'm always trying to figure stuff out i want to see whatever everybody's thinking and get a uh, variety of perspectives on things. Well, so. I, uh, I encourage you to go to our, check out our website. It's school sucks project.com, which you might be there if you're watching us live. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, if you just look through our podcast history, which you can do by, I mean, podcast, all podcasts will get you there. Or you can search math. Uh, you can search, uh, pedagogy uh we and we've done almost 200 shows so we've covered a, a lot of topics and you know even if it's off topic for exactly what you're you're looking for i think that's where i've gotten a lot of my better ideas uh when i wasn't directly looking for them although we did do a very recent show that was about math yeah we did we did actually do a Khan academy show not too long ago uh, but there was okay, also that okay. ted talk one that we did so if i just search week. for Khan academy it'll show up in your list of stuff 
Uh, yeah, you should be able to find it that way. Where, where are you located, Bill? Um, Jersey. Jersey. Where in Jersey? North, south? Uh, uh, right out, outskirts of Philly. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I, uh, I wish you were in New Hampshire. You could come and sit in this room with us and do shows with us. 